Hello, this is CyberDoc. Today I'm doing a repair on iPhone 5. As you can see from the school mat, that I, um, the school chart that's in the screen, I'm taking apart and disassembling on water damaged iPhone 5 and doing a backlight repair on it. This is actually my first repair video for iPhone 5. and um, for backlight anyway so this is the school chart that we use and make for iPhone repairs it's really uh, just a double sided you can check out my other video about it it's a double sided magnet with an iPhone 5 picture on it so the idea is that if you take the screws off from your iPhone, you can put the placement of the screw and the parts at the proximal location. And this is a standard A4, um, 8.5 times by 11 inch paper, or A4 paper, you know, regular printing paper size, magnet. And I'm gonna skip ahead because what I'm doing right now is just taking the logic board out, which is not very interesting. There's plenty of videos on um, how to disassemble iPhone 5. So let's skip ahead. Oh, uh, another thing to mention about this magnet. Um, the design has changed since I shoot this video. We have a, you can go to our website, cyberdocklc.com. The new magnet has a much more clear image and better, de better design of the iPhone 5. Uh, yeah. Okay, so let's skip ahead. It's gonna be on mute until the larger board. It's out.
So yeah. Um, so now you see, hold on. Now you see the larger board. Finally, it's separated from the iPhone five back uh, iPhone four. That ah, sorry, iPhone five back frame, and I'm holding it and inspecting, looking at it. Uh, you can see in this video, but this larger board had really, really serious water corrosion and it's just a mess. It was literally green. Just when you look at it. Um, it was a green larger board. It was corroded everywhere. Stuff doesn't look very good. So um, I don't know if I can actually fix it at this point because all the water damage and corrosion. So what's going to happen is I'm going to do the repair anyway, regardless. Um, if this board is dead or not. So, uh, to my surprise, Apple really did it this time. Um, iPhone 5, for those of you didn't know, the metal, the magnetic, sorry, the, the electric field or the anti-electric field shielding, or just really a piece of metal sheet on top of the logic will usually protect uh, the sensitive electronics when it's turned on. This time, iPhone 5 is actually soldered onto the logic board on both sides, which, in my opinion, would have been very hard to do by Apple because a lot of things can go wrong in the soldering uh, solder oven or yeah, the soldering oven when they heat this and there's no way for you to correct the arrow once you mount on the heating sh the, the metal shield so it, it's just difficult for people who does the um, larger board level repair because you have to get rid of the heat sh the metal shell before you can get to the service mount components and it's in the way and it's soldered on to get it off you have to desolder it off first so that's what i'm doing right now trying to find a good spot to get a weak point opening by using a precision cutter And you just need a little opening. So now I'm attempting to remove the shield by simply heating it up. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Bad example, but I did it anyway. Just you know, another curiosity to see if it will uh, it, it, see if you can just simply heat out the metal shield and melt it off. So um, now I'm putting some flux on and doing the same thing, just trying to melt it off and using a little bit of quick alloy, cyberduck alloy. Uh, the only problem I have now is I only have two hands and I don't have a dirt arm. I wish I had a dirt arm sometimes when I do stuff like this, but for some reason we will design with two arms. Okay, so need another hand.
So I eventually became smart enough to realize, hey, I have a vice for exactly the situation like now to hold the larger board. Even though I just normally never use this since I bought it. But now it become useful. So yeah, this video is just showing you how painful or easy, it depends on what kind of person you are, to take off the metal shielding on iPhone 5 larger board. I don't know if I can do this at all without damaging the larger board without the quick alloy, cyberdog alloy. You can get this alloy from my website um, down below in the video description cyberdogilc.com so yeah I, I don't know if I can do any well I can't think of an easier way to take out a metal shielding other than um, using this alloy you just you basically mix it with the uh, solder that's already on the board and once it's mixed it's molten and states uh, stays in the liquid form then you can just easily peel off as long as it's, it's hot uh, you can peel off the metal shield with the solder being molten I'm using a solder wick to hold the solder the low melting alloy and mixing it with the existing logic was order. I suppose you could use a hot air to heat up the friend and um, peel it off that way but I would imagine that would be more dangerous. See once once you mix the alloy you it peels off very easily when you heat it out a little bit. So basically for the rest of the video you repeat the same process. You mix the alloy and you heat it up again at low heat. Well, it's a soldering iron, and then peel off the peel off the metal shield. Flux always helps. Um, use no clean flux gel paste, and lots of alloy, I guess. See, it comes out rather easy once you mix the alloy in. It's a bloody hell job. I, I don't know. It's it's a lot easier than without the uh, without the alloy available. So you, if you're doing this, you definitely want to get some of this uh, alloy stuff. It's even with it, it's just tedious. I, I I'm sure that if you use to it, you do a lot of this. Um, it will speed up the process. But personally, I just think this takes way too long. Cause traditionally, you really just need to peel off the metal shell. Apple never soldered it all. Entire shells, the the sheet on top of the logic board so tightly. But in iPhone five, they did. Um, so yeah, well, as the video is doing the soldering, I want to talk about iPhone 5. So all I noticed is that Apple makes it easier to change the screen so the Apple Store can repair it in store. But they also at the same time make it a lot more difficult for the logic board to be um, either repair or I guess it's they, they don't really care about people repair logic board. Come on, to be honest, how many people would actually do this? Um, probably not really worth it for the most part, um, label wise. But 
I guess Apple did it to um, weed out the they don't they don't want their competitors to have such an easier time to find out what kind of chip they use or stuff like that. But yeah, now like you can see, once the alloy is previously mixed, you just need to heat it up a little bit and peel it off. In a way, this is actually better because the peeling is easier than um, than just taking the friend out. If that's assuming you want to take all the friends off on iPhone 5 or the iPhone larger board. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's just one giant metal shield. It's tedious work. And when you use the device, you want to be very careful not to crash any uh, service mount components. Always, always, when in doubt, use your flux. And don't buy flux from China. Um, you can get this. Uh, no clean solder paste flux from the website below cyber.lc.com or any other um, I guess any other soldering supply store but whatever you do just don't get it from China because I don't know what they're selling from China it's not flux it's probably uh, I don't know what it is it's, it's just I, I try some of those uh, a while ago, I tried some of those uh, IMA flux from China. Um, those you 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 probably seen it before. It's those yellow gel like uh, ink syringes. It's like it's opaque. Um, it's almost I don't know what it is, but. It's not flux. It's horrible. It, it smells bad. It's toxic for sure, and it's not no clean. It has a lot of solid inside, and it smells horrible. It's not. It's definitely not an RMA flux. RMA flux means it's a rosin based flux and it's mildly activated so mildly activated rosin flux whatever they sell in China I don't think there's rosin in there it's whatever it's just bad flux stay away from those get decent don't have to be the best but decent no clink flux from other supplier or supply you use. Um, you can get it from our website, but you don't have to. Uh, flux is flux. Except, you know, some, not all the flux from China, obviously. Some, I'm sure they mix. Uh, China as a country, they make uh, different suppliers that make flux that you, that's usable. But whatever you can get, like the stuff you see on eBay that's really cheap, the RMA flux and from um, yeah, Alibaba.com, those stuff are no good. Stay away from those flux. It will destroy your project. Or maybe your lung. Oh, and also for those of you, um, don't buy. Also, don't don't do not buy flocks from uh, Home Depot or plumbing because those flocks has like it has active ingredient zinc chloride or something that that can make hydrochloric acid when you heat it up, and that will destroy your larger board or whatever project you're working on because of the hydrochloric acid is very acidic. It's not like the flux I'm using in this video, which only has a weak acid, uh, really weak acid. But, so the hydrochloric acid works much better as an activator for flux, but it will eat away your larger board and make it really corroded. So don't use those flux either. The plumber flux, those flux are not good for electronics. 
They are not friendly to electronics. Okay, as you can see, I removed half of the board. Thank God. Um, there's two more since this video is primarily dedicated to removing the uh, the metal shield. Another reason I had to do this for this larger board is because of the extensive of the water damage and corrosion on the larger board. You have to clean it. Whenever you have a water damage larger board, you need to take it apart and clean it. You don't want the corrosion to get any worse, or if it's already happening, you want to get get it off so you don't show something. So either way, I, I had to like remove these and cl clean it with uh, isopropyl alcohol. But it, this video ended out to be a really nice tutorial to show you how to uh, remove these annoying metal shields. Namely using the uh, Cyberdog Alloy, aka Quick Alloy. Um, you technically can put these metal shell back, but I wouldn't recommend it. It's just a lot more work than it's worth. It really doesn't do much. I mean. It takes some really strong current or electric discharge to damage these uh, components. The metal shield is really not necessary. Without it, the dodger ball would be just fine. As long as it's, you know, you know, you're not touching it with your finger when it's turned on with power and battery and everything. So yeah, again, let's review. Um, we I just uh, put the alloy on top of the solder joints and heat it up. Make sure the pre original solder joint melt. Then once that happened, you just when you want to peel it off, you just heat it up and it will peel out easy like that. It's a little bit like peeling an orange. I don't know if that's a good analogy. Just be gentle and be careful. Be patient. So yeah, um, I am not offering this repair on my website, mostly due to the shield. It takes just way too much of my time, way too long to do this. Um, I don't think I can do this on a regular basis. But I do sell the parts, like if you want to get the iPhone 5 backlight IC and backlight coil and the three backlight filters, strangely, uh, iPhone 5 has three backlight filters. Previously, in iPhone 4, iPhone 4S, and even the 3GS, Apple had two backlight filters. One going into the screen, the other one coming out of the screen for the current. But iPhone 5, I guess it's due to the retinas, this bigger screen or whatever reason, there's two, uh, the, there's three backlight filters. So. So, I guess I have to put in the quick alloy and cyberdog alloy in the kit for iPhone 5 because I really don't see how you can do this without the alloy. And you need a lot of it too. You don't, you can't just give you a little bit piece like how I usually give it to uh, my customers for iPhone 4S and iPhone 4. You only need a little bit in those cases for the desoldering alloy. We have on fire, you need a lot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna include like a large piece of the alloy. For the iPhone 5 backlight kit.
So this video takes a quite a long time. You can fast forward whenever you want. Um, in on YouTube, I guess when you watch this, I was still in shock how um, why the hell Apple did this. <laughs> still in shock when I was doing this repair, thinking like, "Wow, gee, this must cost a lot of more money to assemble." Even though it's automatic, it just means like you cannot fix it once you put it on. I don't know. I, I, I thought it would cost extra money for Apple to do this. Apple's been making a lot of... Um, I don't know, it's just like... It's, I don't think this costs money. It costs more money. But I guess good for them, they're trying to protect their uh, intellectual um, copyright, I guess, for the chip components on iPhone 5. They don't want their developers, engineers, and compet from competitions, uh, competitor engineers to reverse engineer their product. And yeah. So I, I can only assume that's why they did this. Anyways, um, yep, patience, lots, lots of patience. It's amazing, sometimes it's amazing how much things that you can do with a simple alloy like that. All it does is just melts at a little bit lower temperature, but there's just so many different kinds of repair and different ways you can use it.
Okay, so this is the iPhone 5 larger board, finally, without the metal shield. As you can see, after this zoom in, give my camera a little sec, it's not the brightest. I think it's stuck a little bit. Alright, so. As you can see, uh, this again, technical difficulty. Alright, as you can see, there's a lot of corrosion near the, you see that little L, L thing that it says L on it? That's the backlight coil for iPhone 5. So as you can see, there was tons and tons of corrosion on this larger board and it needs to be cleaned. And I'm gonna bet that coil is probably burned. If it's not burned, it's corroded. Okay, so this part is simple. You just cling it. If I still prefer alcohol, brush, brush, brush. Brush gently. I like to use the Sonicare toothbrush head for this because the brush head it's really soft from the Sonicare. And you can even attach it to the toothbrush and use the sonic cleaning vibration for it. It cleans the logic board very nicely of Sonicare. So it's brush gently. Very soft brush. Clean the rust. I'm gonna fast forward a little bit. Yeah, you can fast forward too if you're getting tired of watching me brushing the logic board.
Okay, so that's the end of uh, our video from cleaning the logic board. Now the logic board is clean. So the rest of the video is going just going to be a uh, overall view of the iPhone 5 logic board. Which is like a quick scan of what's on it. And I hope you enjoy the video and realize how annoying <laughs> the taking the metal shell off. I'm, I'm sure you can do this a lot faster. Um, this was my first time to take off a metal shield from iPhone 5, so it took me like almost forever, apparently. Now looking back on the video. You can probably do this in 10 minutes if you rush it. Um, yeah, I, th I think 10, 15 minutes, or t probably 20 minutes is reasonable. Um, to take out all the metal shield. But for the backlight, you really only need um, you don't you don't need to take all all of the metal shield off. You just need to take one or part of it. Okay, uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you for watching, and the rest of the video is just gonna be um, going over the logic board. Bye now.